Okay, so in this video, I'm going to be talking about simple harmonic motion. Uh, let me let me show you what simple harmonic motion is. Uh, example is probably a pendulum, right? So it's just swinging back and forth. Uh, in in a in an ideal world, it'll just keep swinging back and forth all the time. But you know, obviously there's gravity, air friction, and so on that'll make it stop. Um, another example is probably um, probably the tide. So, for example, uh, you should know that, well, here's the Earth. Okay, well, that's a bit dodgy Earth, but anyway, that's the Earth, and here's the Moon. I probably should have swapped the colors, but anyway, you get the idea. So, Moon, Earth. Uh, the high tide, uh, so wherever the Moon is, that's where the high tide is happening, because the Moon is going to pull on the, bo the body of water, if you want to think of it that way. Right, so that's why there's high tide. So as the moon goes around, uh, this, well, the body of water doesn't follow it, but like you know, it, at different times of the day, different parts of the earth um, feel the uh, feel the tide. So, um, so if you take one point, one place, like you will notice that uh, during throughout the day, uh, well, once once a day there's high tide, and in the tall hours after that there's usually low tide, right? So, so that's those are the examples. Uh, let me let's get into the maths of this. Okay, so I'm going to be dealing dealing with just one dimensional uh, simple harmonic motion. So right, so just along a um, a number plane, for, say, so between zero and some some random number, it's going to be oscillating. Okay, so it's going to be going back and forth about a point. And the way that you usually say, um, mathematically say that kind of behavior is like this. You say x is equal to a sine nt plus alpha. Okay, so a, a is the distance that it goes. So for example, if it was just 1, about 0 it will go 1 and then go back to minus 1 and then go back to 1 and so on, right? Um, if you if it was three, it'll go all the way up to three, and etc. This n n thing over here, that's actually controlling how fast how fast it's going. So for for example, if if n was really big, it'll be going really fast back and forth, and if it was really small, say 0 0.001, it'll be going slowly back and forth. Okay, so slowly back and forth about zero, and uh, lastly, this alpha it just it just tells you where it starts off from. So, for example, you'd expect it to start from the middle, uh, but that that really depends on how you model the problem, right? Right. So, so for the tide problem, it's definitely what is the middle? Like, is it twelve o'clock or is it three o'clock? You know. So, this alpha is just a way of saying, okay, where does it start? What, what point in time does it start? Okay. Um, now, if x is given by this displacement equation, right? So t is time, obviously. I hope you figured that out. Um, so to find velocity, so I'm going to call it x dot. So this dot means it differentiated once, right? So to find velocity, which is change in x or change in time, um, you differentiate this equation. And when you differentiate that, what do you get? So we're going to end up with a cos nt plus alpha but thanks to this n over here, I need to put an n up front. Okay, so that's that's my that's my uh, velocity, and finally to get acceleration, which I will call x double dot, right? Which is change in velocity over change in time, right? Or rather, second di differentiation of x. I will end up with. Uh, so I'm going to skip ahead and just go minus n squared a sine nt plus alpha okay so i'll let you confirm this what's really curious is that if you look at this part a sine nt plus alpha and a sine nt plus alpha they're exactly the same right so a different way of me wording simple harmonic motion is to go x double dot is equal to minus n squared uh, n squared x okay right um, now that's that's the basic simple harmonic motion. So I'm going to do one more one more extension. So suppose I had a number over here. So I say plus three, right? So it's oscillating. What this what 
what happens now is that it's oscillating about 3. Okay, in, in that case, if it's oscillating about 3, uh, this is simply going to shift from 3 and then it's going to be oscillating back and forth over there. But what's interesting about what's, what changes over here is that over here, in that case, it will become minus n squared x minus 3. So because when I take 3 to the other side, right, uh, x minus 3 is equal to a sine nt plus alpha. This would have disappeared when you're differentiating, right? So, yeah. Okay. Um, so you need to keep that in mind. So anytime you see, anytime you see uh, something like this, where you go x double dot is equal to I don't know minus nine x uh, plus three, right? What you need to keep in mind is that it's oscillating about a point, and if you want to figure out which point exactly it is, you need to take the nine out and go. This is going to be x uh, minus a third, right? So it's going to be oscillating about a third. And the amplitude, um, sorry, sorry, not the amplitude. Okay, um, okay, uh, I think I'm mix mixing up concepts. Let's let's go to a solid solid example. So suppose I have x is equal to um, x is equal to five sine three t, and I'm not going to worry about alpha. So I'm just going to say x is equal to five sine three t. All right. Um, now, in this case, the amplitude is going to be simply five, so that's your amplitude. But what about the what about the period, right? So how how fast? So if say t was in seconds, how fast does uh, does this oscillate, right? So that's that's a question that gets asked quite often enough. Now you know the sine curve makes one big cycle when it's uh, when it's two pi, right? So what we effectively end up saying is 3 capital T, and capital T stands for period, has to be equal to 2 pi. So therefore my period is going to be, in this case, 2 pi on 3. So every 2 pi on 3 seconds, it'll make one big cycle. Right, so... Um, oh, and lastly, before you finish this section off, uh, so lastly, before we finish this section off, I want to show you uh, one more interesting property that happens to do with velocity. Okay, so in this case, so with this going with going here with this example, I know x is equal to five sine three t. Velocity is in this case going to be three times five, which is well fifteen, cos three t. And last but not least, I can end up saying acceleration. So a or x double dot whatever you want to call it is going to end up being minus uh, so it's going to be a minus 45 sine 3t right so let me let me just focus this there is actually a way of me writing this as a consequent as a consequence or rather as um, as a function of x and that and to do that what I'm going to do is, is I'm going to square this I'm going to say velocity squared is equal to uh, 15 so velocity squared is going to be instead of writing 15 I'm going to say uh, 5 squared times 3 squared cos squared 3 t right and guess what cos squared over here can be written as sine squared right so it's going to be uh, 5 squared and in brackets 3 squared times 1 minus sine squared 3t right so this this is just one of the identities right so one of the basic identities because cos squared plus sine squared is equal to 1 so I can use this identity and now this is going to be 5 squared is equal to 3 squared minus uh, 3 squared sine squared 3t and now we can write, the, write this up because if you remember from up here x was equal to 5 sine 3t okay so to wrap it up I'm going to end up saying this is simply equal to 5 squared 3 squared minus x squared okay so just to just to conclude uh, you can end up 
in the simple harmonic motion case, you can end up saying velocity squared is equal to uh, n squared times a squared minus x squared, right? So you get the amplitude from here, and the and and to calculate the, the period, you get the information. You you have n, right? So n is what I used up here to calculate the period in this example over here. So in this example, n uh, was was three. Okay, so you can find out the period. Uh, so yeah, so that's that's it for the simple harmonic motion introduction. In the next video, I'll be doing some examples, some some solid examples to uh, tell you how to use this information. And uh, thanks for listening.